uh, were diagnosed in your teenage years with Wilson's disease, yeah? Yeah, I was diagnosed at 16, and um, I, I have very short experience with diagnosis. I was diagnosed the day I was put on the liver transplant list. Wow. So I, I was, uh, it was the summer before my senior year of high school, and I, I had just not really been feeling well, um, very yeah. lethargic, very much like you were when you were at your about 13, 14 years old age. Um, something seemed wrong, but everyone just thought I was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. Mono had been going around our school. And so my doctor actually diagnosed me with mono without even doing a test. What's she's mono? Just like, Mononucleosis, it's a very common disease in the United States among teenagers. Um, it's, I, I'm not sure if it's a virus or not. Don't quote yeah. me on that because um, I haven't, it hasn't been a reference in my life for at least 10 years. <laughs> um, but it's just a very common disease that goes around schools. Kids get it. They're sick for a few weeks and go back. And because it had been so common in my school, my doctor just said, I'm certain that's what you have. Um, you're going to be sick for a while and you'll get better. And so I was sick just the whole summer before my senior year of high school. And actually the day I had my senior photos taken, um, I had to cut, cut it short. I felt so tired and so sick. And my mom took me home and I got severe stomach pain that day. Yeah. Um, I couldn't deal with the pain by the next morning. We went to the emergency room that was just down the street from our house. And um, I didn't go home until I had a new liver. <laughs> I was walking, talking just like this. And within 24 hours, I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk normally. Um, I was swollen. I went into hospital at about 140 pounds. And a week later, I was 185 just from water retention. Yeah. Literally from that day, which was, that was only 24 hours after I'd gotten to the hospital. It's all kind of blurry. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. It, I was so sick so fast. I turned yellow in that 24 hours. I was bright yellow. Yeah. Um, Kaiser Fleischer rings was actually what happened. So at the first hospital after MRI, MRI, ultrasound, ultrasound, doctor walks in, shines a flashlight, and he's like, oh, no, Kaiser Fleischer rings. And me and my mom are like, what? <laughs> One of those. And um, of course, now the telltale sign of Wilson's like, disease. Do and you feel like I'm... you have any Wilson's disease side effects post transplant? Not now, no, not at all. Um, I feel uh, a million times better. I didn't realize how ill I was or what I, my full potential could have been or could be. Um, so, yeah, I haven't felt like this in years. Uh, to be honest, it's been really weird. It's like having to get to know a new person. Um, in some ways, you know, but yeah, so yeah, I, I definitely don't have any of the, the Wilsons. There's no tiredness. I didn't even realize I was joined. I must have been jaundiced throughout this whole period of having it because it wasn't until after I had the operation that all my friends said to me, like, you, you, you're not yellow anymore. And I was like, I didn't realize I was anyway, but no one ever said it to me. Do you know what I mean? It's not like someone, your friends are just like, I think they just thought that one friend just said, I thought you was just naturally that color. I just thought that was you. I've graduated college, I've gotten married, I've traveled um, several places, very fun. I can't, it's amazing all the things I've been managed to do with a liver transplant that hasn't helped me back in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, and, and, and one thing that I should bring up for anybody that's watching this, um, I, and I do have some side effects that I don't know that they're transplant related. Um, I have a lot of issues with my stomach. I have a lot of issues with just food adversity, things that make me sick. We don't know if it's related to the transplant or if it's just genetic. Um, just like everybody in my family has stomach issues type yeah. thing. Um, and so I, that's been for me kind of a personal mission is trying to find more transplant patients that are maybe 10. I, I've had mine for 12 and a half years now. Um, that's incredible. That's really good. Yeah, and the liver's doing great. I, I love to say my liver's perfect. The rest of me is a little iffy. Um, <laughs> but my liver is doing absolutely perfect. I'm so blessed. And, and I know nothing about my organ donor. Um, I wrote them a letter after I graduated high school to the family to thank them. Um, but 
otherwise I, I just know that I was blessed that they made the decision to say yes. Um, and, and I don't know, is it any different in the UK? Do you know anything about your donor? Yeah, I know the age. He was uh, 22 and like I say, he was male. Um, and we have the option to send a letter. So you send a letter to, I'd say, the hospital yep. um, and they're like a middle party. Uh, so if the family agreed to receive a letter, the hospital can send it on. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to send a letter. I was going to wait until uh, I was a year down the line. That was my plan. That's uh, exactly what I did. I waited a year. I graduated high school. I got accepted into college because for me, it was to be able to say, like, to show them, like, this is, you gave me my life back. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly my thoughts. I thought, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's different, but I just thought I'd like to tell them, you know, rather than just write it whilst I'm lying in recovery, I wanted to, you know, give them the story of what I'd achieved um, afterwards. Your, did your boyfriend, uh, did he know about your transplant before? Was this something you had to explain? Great. Yes, great question. Cause this is something I wanted to get into more. Um, so I met my, <laughs> my this is such a funny story. We were working at a Renaissance fair. I yeah. was, he was a knight in shining armor, literally. Um, so everybody in the cast knew about my liver transplant. So whether he knew about it when I met him, I wasn't really sure. But from the moment, from day one, he wasn't, I remember telling him and he was just like, uh-huh. And just eating his dinner. And he was like, and what else about you? And, and I was just like, I'm in love. And, um, you know, I, I, I would wear a sports ball walking around after you wore a hundred pound dress all day in the heat and my scar. And he would always just be like, Brad, you're beautiful. And, and it's what made me fall in love with him. Yeah. The thing that we've talked about a lot in six years is whether or not we want to have kids. Um, yeah. Especially after my niece was born because she is the cutest thing in the whole world. And really we've come to the decision that I don't. And part of it is the fear of passing on Wilson's disease. Although um, it, I'm pretty sure I've done the genetic t understanding. It's a very low chance um, for one parent recessive. Troy would get tested if we really ever went down that path. Um, and for us, it's a decision of just my health had to come first. I, I still end up in the hospital several times a year, very, very sick, unable to keep fluids down for days at a time. And I, and I can't put a child in that position. I don't want to. Now, not to say if ended up with a child we're beyond excited about that and we'll make everything happen you're um, still very young yeah so i'm, I'm 30 this year. Ahead. um and we've also talked about down the line when we're much more established adopting older children or being a foster family type situation yeah. um for us right now though we're very very happy with fur children <laughs> so weirdly uh